All right, folks, welcome back to Bendy Vang Fishing. It's your boy, Bendy Vang. And in this video, we are finally going to do an in depth review of all my rods, reels, and all my gear, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and get started, guys. Um, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and start with my speeding setups, okay? So hopefully you guys can see this okay. This is the Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus. Um, I've been having this reel for about a year or so, and I can say it's pretty doggone good. Uh, right now, as you guys can see, I got some 8-pound braid, and I have that with the FG knot tied to a 8-pound liter fluorocarbon. And I like to use a Nico hook and with just any other weight here as a drop shot setup. And I also like to use it with uh, Ned Rigs, Weightless Senkos, and stuff like that. And depending on exactly what I want to do. But I have it paired up with the 6.6 HMG rod, medium heavy, fast action. If I could go back in time, I would have gotten like a 7 foot medium. Uh, maybe like a Shimano Zodius or X Pride or something like that. Because, I don't know, just a little bit more um, better when it comes in terms of sensitivity and stuff. But this thing will do for now. Did catch some bigs. Actually did catch a Sturgeon <laughs> with this freaking rod few years back but let's go on to the next combo here is the I don't even know what this is called this is like my wife's setup this is a Shimano Claris rod 6.6 medium power with the Fluger reel um, not that great of a setup honestly but it does the job I did catch that giant four pound smallie off this exact setup you guys can see there it's like a Ned rig and yeah it catches fish that's all that matters but again eight pound braid tied onto eight pound fluorocarbon leader with the FG knot. Okay, now let's go ahead and get on to the braid setups. This is the Shimano Scorpion with the Daiwa Tula rod. I have, I believe this is 60 pound, no, 50 pound braid. And I like to use this setup for my frogs, uh, buzz baits, top waters kind of deal, okay? And uh, like I said, this is a Tatula medium heavy casting rod, 7-1. And I gotta say, it's pretty boy, pretty beast real, you know? Shimano, JDM, Scorpion setup. I mean, I like it, does the job. All right, and here is the other braid setup. This is my Daiwa Tatula SV, as you guys can see. And I have it with my heavy power 7-4 Tatula rod. And guys, you guys know me. This is my punching setup, dude. This is my go-getter, dude. This thing freaking nails it every single time. What a freaking beast. And also, guys, I have like, I believe, 50 pound braid on that, okay? All right, let's start. Let's get on going with some of the fluorocarbon setups. This is one of my babes. This is the Bantam. You guys can see there. Come on, focus. Okay, it doesn't want to focus. Okay, whatever. But this is the Bantam setup here with the Shimano X Pride. This is actually in the eight gear ratio. And right now I have I have it with Braid 40 pound Power Pro. I used to have it with uh, straight fluorocarbon, but I decided to give it a shot. You know, like let me try this Braid to FG knot with fluorocarbon. And I gotta say, it's eh, it's okay because sometimes when you're casting and stuff, you can get like bird nests and stuff like that. Especially when the uh, uh, the line starts to fray up and stuff like that, it can just cause you some troubles on the waters and and I can imagine on tournament day you don't want that to happen because you're gonna be stuck fiddling and tying an FG knot and you're gonna you you just don't want to be there okay but basically um, I like to use this setup for pretty much anything I mean like it's a great all-around setup um, I love the Shimano X Pride if you guys have one you know if you guys don't have one you gotta find out because this thing it's a sick rod um, I don't know if this is the um, glass or graphite but this is the 7.2 medium heavy and it's a beast dude when I had my NRX still I gotta say I couldn't really tell which one I preferred for jigging I mean like it's not as sensitive but it's so darn good honestly great setup you guys you guys gotta try that Shimano Bantam yeah, hopefully it focuses there but yeah what a babe setup and I have right now a jackhammer like throwing jigs pretty much everything on this rod my opinion guys you gotta have a few rods that are medium heavy with some fluorocarbon because you know there's just too many options to throw, too many tools. Okay, let me get on to my next setup, okay? This is my Daiwa Steez. I've been owning, I had this reel for about three to 
four years now and I gotta say dude one of my favorite baitcasters of all time and why is it that this is one of my favorite baitcasters I don't know guys it's just a freaking sick beast dude like it just looks good it's black it's sleek I used to be like super anal about making sure that this reel doesn't get any scratches but as you guys can see it does have some scratches and stuff on it because I felt like eventually like I was so obsessed with the fact and the obsession to just keep my reels clean and stuff all the time like I used to be like a super Shimano JDM freak and you know had my TMDCs and Terrace you know all those high-end reels eventually I was just like dude what the heck am I doing this is like I'm just becoming like a consumer of like high-end products and I kind of lost sight of fishing and stuff but you know who cares ding up your reels man because that is fishing that is what they're used for and I have it paired up with the poison adrena this is the 7-2 medium heavy I have the old adrena gen 1 this is gen 2 and I gotta say it's just as good I mean like I don't know man like the poison adrena gen 1 is good and then now the poison adrena gen 2 is just as good even better um, they did redesign it and stuff I gotta say the the handle and everything is like freaking beast but yeah I have it paired up with uh, 14 pound FC sniper um, I'm, I'm thinking about upgrading it to like 16 or 17 pounds because uh, I like to use this as my jig rod and sometimes when I skip under docks and stuff like that as you guys can see in my videos like the line will break when it rubs on like metal and wood and that's not a good thing so let's go on to the next combo Woo! I'm gonna put these down these this way I don't want them to fall okay now on to my next big cast combo and I gotta say this is also one of my favorites dude it is the Corrado DC okay and I got a custom Gomexus handle this is the 7 speed ratio okay oh I got a little ding there I probably need to retie that and um <clears throat> excuse me I got it paired up with the Fenwick Atos, okay Atos, whatever you want to call it okay and this is the 7 2 medium power with a moderate action okay and I like to throw this with a crankbait as you guys can see here the parrot color Rapala I think it's DT10 and I like to throw it with my jerk baits and stuff and you guys can see from my videos I throw this combo a lot I love throwing jerk baits I love getting reaction strikes so it's such a fun bite and not only that it's just like fish love eating jerk baits but yeah this is one of my favorite setups here and I have uh, right now currently 12 pound Seaguar Invesix on this line and let's go ahead and get going to the next combo, boys. Okay. Dude, right here, bros. This is the ultimate caster combo that I have. This is my Excalibur. I gotta say, I've been wanting this reel for like all my life, ever since I, I was introduced to bass fishing. Like, dude, it's the Shimano Antares, dude. This is like the freaking ultimate weapon in a video game, I can say. But, you know, this is fishing. And I have it paired up with one of the most ultimate rods ever from the Shimano brand lineup. I gotta say, it's the Shimano Conquest, dude. Hope you guys can see that. And honest opinions about the Shimano Conquest, it's freaking sick, okay? I actually traded my NRX for this Conquest rod. And I gotta say, I made the wrong choice, okay? And why I say that is because the 7.6 is good, okay? It's good. For those uh, long bombing offshore casts where you're bombing your lure hella far and you're working it in the depths, okay? And when you get a fish bite, you can hook set and this is a 7.6, okay? And so when the rod is bent, um, you have a good position of not having that fish jump off or whatever. But the thing is, the only disadvantage of this setup is with, with it being like a super long rod, a 7.6, when you hook set, it actually, you, you have to hook set perfect every single time and man, what I mean perfect is like you got to hook set like on point otherwise you have a high chance of not setting the hook and yeah I got to say maybe it's something I got to develop on but I prefer my seven foot medium heavy NRX over this conquest setup but as you guys can see here this is the Shimano and Terrace hopefully uh, the camera focuses okay I do apologize if it is not but um, some of the things that I love throwing with this um, combo right here is the dark sleeper. And as you guys can see right here, come on camera. This is the, this is the dark sleeper on the setup guys. 
And I gotta say, this is one of my favorite setups if you're throwing the Dark Sleeper. Dark Sleeper is great for exploring, you know, the depths and, you know, just covering water. But the only downfall about the Dark Sleeper, and I don't know if you guys noticed, but this year I've actually started to throw the Dark Sleeper less. And why is that? It's because the Dark Sleeper has a horrendous hookup ratio. And I, I hook up on it pretty fair, but folks who aren't used to, you know, setting that hook like crazy, you're gonna get the fish. The fish is gonna jump off, dude. And I've seen it happen. And I've, it's happened to me before too. And the reason because the hook inside the dark sleeper is just so dang on tiny. Like, look at that. Like, you got so much, you got like no room to penetrate the fish's mouth, dude. It's so tiny, like. That's why I started to use the jig a lot more. The hookup ratio is just amazing on a standard bass jig. Like on a bass jig, like the hook is like widely exposed like that. So when this, as soon as the fish bites and you set the hook, you're getting so much like metal into the fish's mouth. So when he's trying to shake it off and stuff like that, the hook doesn't fly off. But then with a dark sleeper, because the hook is so small, it's like you can just barely hook a fish or the barb doesn't even penetrate the fish. You're SOL, dude. Like you are just like, asking for it and you don't want that to happen on tournament day and you don't even want that to happen on fun fishing day because i've seen it too many times and it sucks right and another downfall about the dark sleeper okay it's great it awesome it catches fish it draws in fish and it looks freaking awesome but the only downfall is that these little suckers <laughs> they break down too much dude like it's like it's like a six seven dollar lure and you gotta do so much modifications just to make sure that the lure is good like like for how i have it like i added glue and stuff to the head to make sure that it's good and sometimes it's just like a hassle to work on that. So like your standard bass jig with like a large hook, you have a higher hookup ratio. Uh, you get bigger bites sometimes too. And you know, I would rather prefer a better hookup ratio than not getting a fish, right? Woo! But okay guys, I think we're about at the end of this video. Let me know if you guys enjoyed what you see. Make sure to smash that like button, okay guys? Really helps the channel grow, really helps me no, you guys enjoy what you guys are watching, right? But other than that, I'm gonna wrap up the video. I'll see you guys in the water next time. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And peace out, okay? Deuces! Alright folks, we got the old camera lens on. This thing is like zoom, zoom, like you can zoom into my face, bro. Intent.